Good afternoon. Good to see everyone. Uh, make a couple general statements uh, as to the game on Saturday, and then I'll open it up for questions. Uh, Southern Illinois is a really good football team, and I thought, uh, as I mentioned after the game, uh, that was probably what we needed uh, to play a really good football team going into uh, a bye week, uh, just to make sure that uh, we're, we're efforting to continue to get better weekly. Uh, I thought they, they had some really good skill kids. They played extremely hard on defense. Uh, I thought they were probably one of the, the top four or five teams that we played all year long. And, uh, uh, you know, for, for Nick and his staff and his team, it would have been nice to have seen them get into the playoffs. Of course, I, I'd love to see as many Missouri Valley teams in the playoff as possible. I think it only helps our brand and, and, and helps the, the conference in whole. Uh, there's always things that we need to work on. Uh, I thought, felt like too many scenarios where we were in second and long, third and long during the course of the game. Now we did a great job of picking those up, uh, but I'd prefer to be in third and short if we had a – uh, if I had my, my option. Um, kicking game, uh, especially our, our, our place kicking game, has got to continue to get better. Uh, there's no place for bad snaps. Uh, I, it frustrates me to all end, and so we got to continue to work on that. And then defensively, uh, we busted a couple fits. Uh, we got to continue to work on our run defense, and I think I think there's definitely room for improvement uh, in that area. But um, overall, yeah, I can't say enough about our staff and enough about the players. Uh, to be able to go 12 and 0 uh, is a is a exceptional feat. Um, but uh, uh, at here at about 3:15, 3:45 today, we're going to close that chapter and, and move on to the second season. Uh, where you're, you're playing to hopefully you get hot and stay hot and, and you have one week season after one week season. And so um, we're going to utilize this next week. Uh, we'll practice a few times this week. Uh, we're going to hold some people out trying to make sure that we are as healthy as we can be uh, here in two weeks. Uh, I think our, our, our limit of 64 sideline players will look a little bit different than it did this past week. We'll get some kids back and, and that'll be good for us um, from a performance aspect. Um, but uh, being fresh and, and, and playing fast will be critical. Uh, it doesn't matter who we play. Uh, we just need to be at our best. So I'll open it up to questions at this time. What do you expect back now? Uh, Cole Cars will be uh, – I'm anticipating will be back. Uh, Josh Babich would be back. Uh, Dimitri Williams uh, would be another name that I think you'll see uh, back. And so just those three guys in themselves, you're, you're talking about three experienced players, two of them seniors that have played a lot of football. Uh, those guys can help us w continue to win football games and to play at a high level. What were your thoughts when you saw the field in South Dakota State and Northern Iowa were on the opposite side? You've been here enough to know they've been paired enough with you guys over the last five, six years. Uh, I, I don't think I really put a whole lot of thought into it. I was surprised, probably like everyone in the room, uh, was anticipating some way, somehow, we were going to have to end up playing the Missouri Valley team. Um, and so that's what I was prepared for. You go into this week, Matt, more of a self-scout, or is this something that you're going to try to look at both of your potential opponents? We'll, two weeks we'll look now? at both of our potential opponents. Uh, you know, it helps a little bit that we've already looked at one of them, uh, even though it was eight weeks ago or so. Um, but we'll take uh, some time to look at them. Uh, I spent the day kind of doing some self-scout uh, for our defensive staff, just trying to help those guys out a little bit um, and have some things in the works as far as offensively. So just trying to see what we're good at, what, we're, what we need to continue to improve at, um, do a good thorough analysis of, of what's gotten us to this point. Uh, but I'm sure there's things that we can continue to identify as issues within the football program. I know Chris used to talk about the relief of not being uh, a defensive staff and offensive staff guy anymore because you prepare for those two teams. You've got all those note cards. you got everything working. How do you look at this week and, and this playoff run in um, terms of how you'll go about supporting your staff and helping them since you're maybe not quite as much in the room uh, single-handedly play developing for two different teams? Well, you know, what, what I'll probably try to end up doing is just get a good feel of, of both teams that we're playing. Uh, since you know Nickel State is, is new, uh, we have not played them over the course of my six years here. Probably will spend a little bit more time just trying to familiarize myself with who they are, who their personnel uh, are on both sides of the football, any issues that they cause. Uh, then you know uh, tomorrow, spend more time, or, or yep, tomorrow, spend more time on UND uh, going forward. And again, just trying to see how they've evolved um, from early in the season till now. Uh, I think they've have. Uh, a little more continuity at the quarterback position than they probably did earlier in the year and see just how that affects them from an offensive standpoint. But uh, I'll try to spread my time amongst all three phases the best I can. So uh, I'll, I'll treat it much like I would a normal week.
You talk about the missed fits in the run game. Was that strictly on you guys, or was did some of it have to do with the way Southern Illinois did the Wildcat stuff with all no, the different was, formations was, and all that stuff? It was, was less. Uh, it, it was. Uh, not the Wildcat runs. It was the two runs they had late in the fourth quarter that they popped. One was like a 30-yarder uh, with uh, with their senior running back. Part of it was they jumped, they jumped us. I don't think we were ready for uh, them to go no tempo for that snap. We got into a call that probably isn't a great tempo call, and we learned a great lesson. At least our, our post player was able to knock it down. But, you know, the, the Wildcat stuff – uh, you know, I think, what do you have, 22 carries for 119 yards. We knew he was going to get his. He's a really good football player. Uh, you know, if you want to call him a running back, call him a, a hybrid quarterback, whatever it might be. But uh, I thought we did a decent job uh, of containing it. There's a couple missed tackles that, that are always part of it. But uh, I thought we were much improved from defending the quarterback run than we might have been three or four weeks ago. How did you health-wise come out of SIU, Kobe and Josh Hayes specifically? Well... You know, I, I know uh, our, our medical staff came over and said Josh Hayes was done. And then we had the goal line stand, and I saw him out there chest bumping everyone. So uh, I, I need to probably ask our medical staff if he was really done. Or uh, I think that was just probably being safe, uh, especially we were up by two touchdowns, and it was in the, 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 the last few minutes of the game. But uh, from all understanding that from talking to, to Bobby and our medical staff, uh, I think both. Uh, Josh Hayes and, and Kobe will be available for our first, for our, excuse me, our first game or the second round game. How valuable is this time of the year, Matt, after going through eight straight games to kind of, you know, have a reprieve, have a bye, and kind of get ready for the postseason? You won't be able to find me on Thanksgiving. That, that's how important it's going to be. Uh, not physically for our kids, and we're going to hold probably a half dozen to eight of them out of practice. Uh, more seniors than anything. I mean, I, I'm afraid to look at how many snaps the guys like James Hendricks has played over the course of the last two years or a Jabril Cox or a Derek Tuska uh, or, or even some of our offensive linemen who now hit the 700 plays mark uh, over the course of the year. So we're going to try to be really smart uh, in, in, in pulling back a little bit, but still demanding them to pay attention, to be locked into different game plans, to see pictures. So that way when we do practice and, and get things cranked back up on Saturday, we'll be ready to go. So you, you saw how Chris handled by weeks after the regular season. Are you changing as a head coach, adjusting anything from what he did? No, we're going to practice the same number. The only difference, and it was more driven by the NDSU as an institution, is uh, in my previous five years, we had school on Wednesday. And so we didn't practice till Wednesday afternoon. All we've done is move that practice up slightly. So that way then we're not the only ones on campus uh, and we're trying to find meal service and those things. We're trying to, and we can get our kids on the road a little bit quicker so they're not driving nearly as late. But uh, as far as uh, the plan, it's going to remain very similar to what we've done. As far as practice structure, I think we'll probably practice anywhere between 15 to 16 periods. I was head coach going into the playoffs. What previous experience do you take from being a coordinator in that position? <clears throat> Well, you got to be ready every week. Uh, every it's 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 one it's one week seasons and uh, one and done. And so uh, you have to flush it real quick. Uh, you know, there's some of the things we do on Sundays change. Uh, there's there's less evaluation or self scout that happens in during the during the playoffs. It's win and immerse yourself in the next opponent and keep your head down and keep going. And maybe on Christmas Day or something, you might get a chance to come out of your hole. But uh, we'll continue to work hard and, and, and hopefully put our kids in a situation to be successful. If I can ask you to get a little sappy so I have something to run on Thanksgiving, can you look back on this year and, and touch on what, what you're thankful for with, with this group, with those who have supported you? Uh, thankful for our staff, uh, unbelievable, uh, good friends. Um, I, I could go through all of them, and, and, and there's, a, there's a moment where all of them have helped me be a better football coach and a better head football coach. Uh, my family, uh, Brenda's a rock star, takes care of the boys, um, which is a handful in, in, in its own, uh, and I think they do it intentionally, uh, drive her nuts. But uh, uh, the administration, uh, you know, to, to allow a guy who's never been a head football coach an opportunity to be the head football coach at the best at football school in the country, uh, you know, they took a shot at a guy that, you know, and I'm enjoying it. Uh, Matt, I appreciate it. So uh, there's a lot of people, and I know I've missed a lot of people uh, that have been our fans. Uh, the people, you know, uh, Rob in the back who run the dome and, and, and get us in there. Uh, wink, wink. We'll, we'll continue to use it as long as it's available. But uh, I could go on. Uh, but it's been, it's been a, a neat experience, and I, and I don't think anyone's ready for it to be done.
So being a head coach, what you expected it was going to be? Or have you woken up some mornings going, holy man, what did I get myself into here? I don't know if I've ever said, what have I got myself into? I've, I've worked for a lot of a good head football coaches, and they – and one of the unique things is, is from Chris to, to Mark Farley to Bob Nielsen to Tom Sawyer, they've all done it a little bit different. And so I've had my opportunities to pick and, and choose what I wanted to carry over. And, and to, you know, but one thing that they've all said is, Matt, when you do get your opportunity, just make sure you're still – you're Matt Entz and be Matt. Don't, don't change who you are uh, just because you sit in a different chair now. Uh, there, there are some other duties – uh, like press conferences that take up some of my time uh, that uh, I wasn't used to, uh, Sunday shows uh, that I have to be at. But you enjoy it. Oh, yeah, you bet. You bet. Yep. Are there guys that you outside of the program and you call Chris or do you call talk guys? Chris, uh, Chris and I talk about every Tuesday at 1130. We've almost blocked off that, to that slot. And he tells me about his ups and downs, and I, I, I probably ask him the same thing. Is, was it like this for you? Um, it was probably become the, the question he gets from me the most. Uh, I just talked to C Coach Nielsen this morning. I had my, my first head coach's all-conference uh, teleconference, and I wanted to make sure I knew exactly what I was supposed to do. Is it more of a, like a gripe session? Like a, no. I, you know, I just got to unload because everything's going on, or is it a, you know, hey, how can I handle this? It, no, it's sharing ideas and how things are, are going, how, you know, wh where you're, where's your program, what do you think? Different ideas. There, there's nothing to complain about. You know, I, I coach a, a game for a living. Um, there's a lot of other things that are worse in this world. So uh, I'm pretty fortunate where I'm at. What? Vent about us. No comment. <laughs> what's Seth Wilson's? What's his status? How's his rehab going? He's going really good. He's out there running patterns with Coach Kramer. Uh, had a little bit of a setback of late, just some swelling, but it, we had another MRI. Didn't seem to be any issues. Uh, you know, hopefully, knock on knock on wood, he'll be cleared for spring ball, but uh, he will not be available for the 2019 season. That all conference vote, what was that like, and and being a part of that for the first time, knowing that this is you're seeing every, you saw everybody in the league outside of one team. Right, it was it was unique uh, to to hear coaches speak about. Uh, you, you could you could hear the personal investment that the coaches have in their players, and uh, I, I think that's that's good. That's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, you you could tell that uh, guys really cared about the the players that they had and wanted the best for them. Um, it, it's it's unique to hear everyone. You know, we didn't get a chance to see Indiana State, so to hear uh, Coach Mallory talk about his guys. Uh, there was guys that were banged up at different times during the year to hear coaches talk about them. Um, you know, it, it's it's an opportunity. Uh, I don't think we, we do it much here at NDSU. We try not to, but it's one of the times you get to be a little braggadocious about your players uh, when it comes to all conference time. In the chest a little bit there about your retro freshman quarterback that threw no way to the yeah. no, I, mean, I think that's good enough. What did you learn from Chris about how he handled the playoffs going in? Uh, just take them one game at a time, uh, be thorough, just keep doing what we're doing. I think we have a really good plan in place and uh, when I say plan, kind of our weekly plan, um, uh, we won't adjust that at all. Uh, I don't, you know, the only time we ever would is if we had a Friday night game, uh, if we were slotted to play on Friday. But otherwise, we're going to just go about it as our business and make sure that's, that's how our kids are the most comfortable. And at the end of the day, it's, it's all about how they feel going into a game. The majority of your kids getting home, have you guys looked at the weather, told them backup plan, team meal, anything like that? We do have a team meal uh, that, that we'll do on Thursday for those that are going to be in town. I think we right now have about 25 that will stay. Um, because of probably having a younger group this year, we have more kids going home. Uh, or In the past, we've had more kids stay. But I think that some of it has to do with just the makeup of your team. Uh, we will do something. Uh, coaches' families, uh, myself, all our coaches and their families, uh, and then any players that are in town will get together and have a, have a Thanksgiving meal. So it, it's, it's always fun. Uh, we'll have, of course, I'm sure the Lions will be on. They are every Thanksgiving. All right. Thanks, guys.